know you appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you too. God bless you. Thank you. The second lecture will be coming up soon. I believe you have been hearing because professional ethics is one of the core causes of our primary and community health. You've been hearing about ethics. You have been taught not to, and you have a handbook of professional ethics. But I don't know how many of you have been going through this uh, uh, professional ethics on your own. And apart from going through it on your own, putting them into practice. I am telling you that you are a genteel profession. A genteel individual in this profession. So you have to be there well. You will not say that you know it already. Because in report say anyone who stops learning is old, whether you are at 80 or you are at 20. If you stop learning, it means you are old, even though you are 20. And John Wooden also said it is what you learn after you know it all that counts. What you learn after you know it all that counts. And remember in psychology, the definition of learning is that learning is a relatively change in behavior as a result of experience. So it is important that you know the ethics of this profession. You don't think yourself to be nobody where you are. You have to present yourself well so that they will not say, is this one, is this one coming from the market? Or is this one coming from somewhere in the village like that? We want to promote different professions. So anywhere you are, you have to observe this ethics in your profession. I want to go straight to look at those important ethics which are the laid down rules and regulations. As a community health practitioner, you have to remember that administration of injection or medication as clinical health practitioner should not be carried out without the consent of a patient or the relative of that patient if the patient is unconscious. You don't give that patient infection without the consent of that patient. Or if that patient is unconscious, you take the consent of the person that is close to you, him or her or the relative of that patient. Then, before I just go on the ethics of community health, I've been telling of, uh, my students that we have many uh, clinical procedures that we have to carry out as community health practitioners. The medical doctors, they have up to 40. While in community health practice, we have up to 25 clinical procedures, you can mention them. For those of you that have been in my class, I've been telling you always, the use of your standing orders is very, very important. Apart from the use of your standing orders as a community health practitioner, you are bound to use medical equipment to arrive at any diagnosis and management of your patients. All those clinical instruments, like our uh, uh, blood pressure apparatus, uh, uh, and monitor and all the instruments that we have. You have to get use of those equipments. You know, if you get to the market, you see many people today walking around carrying scales. Have you been seeing them? Yeah. Uh -huh. They will carry scales. They carry thermometer. And that thermometer, when they carry it, they put it in this place, the elbow. When they put it for some time and then they remove, they will tell that woman in the market, your blood pressure is too bad. Meanwhile, what were they using? The moment. The moment that, hello? Yeah. You are not to be like that. You are to make use of the instruments that you are using. Because remember, we always say, where there is no doctor, who is there? Then you have to set a high standard of practice. 
you will know how to receive um, favor or gifts from patients. Anyhow, as they are coming into this profession, there are some people that at the time that they are treating the patient, they will start paying patients for money. Hello? You are not to pay patients for money. Or sometimes the patient may be, may be selling some materials and then he's bringing the materials to the clinic. You will be telling the patient, please give me, I will pay you. It is wrong for you to do that. And remember, it is punishable by law in community trial. I want to look at dress code. Please, it is very, very important. In community health, you have to dress well. You go on your uniform when you are on TOT. Or as a student now, you have to dress well. I do see some students with their uniform, they wear slippers. Is it right? No. With the uniform, you are expected to put on your collar shoe. And then you dress well. Now that we have our uniform, your top is white. You don't have to put on the, the, the white that the color is no more white. You know, it was, when they asked you, they say it was white, but now it's not white again. Please, for you to protect me with the charge of that facility that I sent you, instead of you to sit down at the facility to pay what you went for, you go for errand. It is wrong. You don't do that. Dress well. Then, you remember you don't have to carry down this pay. Your pay dropping on your uniform is wrong. It's away from our ethics. You don't have to dress like that. And some of you that are using the ring, for you to give that dropping earring, it is wrong. It's an offense. You can be punished. As an student, you can be punished. You have to dress properly. And most times, you see some health workers in the facility, they will carry their space. The cover that you are using, they have another blouse and wear it on top of the space. Please, it is wrong. I respect my uniform very well. So as you are coming into the profession, you have to respect this uniform. If you are putting on this uniform, your white and your ash, please let it be like that. If you are not putting on absenteeism, it is wrong.